Do you want your users to be able to easily customize the reports that you create so they see only information that's relevant to them? Perhaps you've used Power BI slicers before, but either the list was really long or you had to add multiple and it got a little bit confusing. Power BI have launched a new and much improved list slicer, which I wish I had when I started using Power BI eight years ago. Hi, I'm Anne from Adair Major Consulting. I'm here to help you transform your data into meaningful insights in Power BI. Starting today with this no code needed next level slicer, the list slicer. If you're new to Power BI, a slicer is an on page dynamic interactive filter that a user can use to narrow down the data that they see on your report. A list slicer is where you see all the filter options presented out as a clear scannable list on the report page. Some of the new features include being able to add labels, images, and really granular level control of the look and feel of the slicer. Because this is new, if you don't see this icon, then you're going to need to go to your settings, preview, and turn on the list slicer. Once you've done that, we're going to add a list slicer to the report, including a hierarchy. Then we're going to upgrade that with the May 2025 features like label and image and customizing selections. And then stick around to the end where I share some of the major pitfalls that I see all the time with slicers so you know what mistakes not to make. First up, let's add our list slicer. You'll find it there in the visualizations pane. For this report, we're going to use it to display regions and then we'll build a hierarchy with countries underneath. We're starting by pulling in region. See, it works just like any other slicer. Now, to create the hierarchy, simply drag in another field into the same area. We'll add countries here and instantly you'll see that the drop down appears into our list slicer. Next up, I'll resize the slicer and add a shadow. I know not everybody loves the shadows, but that's what the theme of this current report is. Now we're going to add a label. If you've watched my card video, you'll have seen labels before. Essentially, a label provides extra context. Here, I want to show the number of options against the region. So we perform a distinct count of countries to display. Remember, a distinct count tallies up the unique values, while a regular count includes everything. When that comes up, you'll notice that the labels are a little bit obscured, and I'm not sure if that's because this is still in preview. So I'm just going to play around with the number of button settings under layout. This lets me customize what's displayed and how it looks. Ultimately, you'll want to find what works best for you and your users. If you have too many options that overflow the slicer size, you'll see overflow options. Again, in my card video, I actually explored using pagination instead of a scroll bar for an interactive card. Definitely worth checking out. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep everything on one page for clarity. Now let's add some images. In Power BI, you add images by including a direct URL, a web link to the image within one of your tables. I'm curious to know, is this something folks are familiar with? And if not, drop me a comment below and I'm happy to create another video explaining how we set up images, or in this case, where I've reused a public data set for these URLs. Once you add the images, they'll pop up and you'll have various options like image fit, transparency, saturation, and even blur. Honestly, I can't think of a good use for blur. So if anyone sees somebody else using blur or you're using blur in your report and it looks good, please let me know. I'm really intrigued. For our purposes, unblurred and simple is perfect. The next setting we're looking at involves making that text a little bit more dynamic. Under callout values, instead of changing the text for all the text, you can actually define which series you want. So in this case, we can choose the higher or the lower one. Here, we're just focusing on region. I like to tweak the hover state, which means adjusting the color of the font when your user hovers over that word. I'll increase the transparency slightly so when I hover over, it gets a little bit lighter, indicating that it's clickable. And when I actually select it, I want it to be bold. This makes it super obvious which high level item is currently selected, which significantly improves the user experience. 
When you're designing your reports, accuracy, of course, is crucial, but so is the user experience. If you spend hours building a complex report, but it's hard for users to navigate, then it's a real shame because no one's going to use it. But using things like bold and hover states, we've made this more intuitive so that people immediately know that this is the interactive element that drives changes throughout the rest of the report. Next, this is a unique and brand new setting for the list slicer called restrict to leaf node. The items or fields on the lower level of our hierarchy are called leaf nodes. Maybe I don't want a user to be able to choose an entire region. Perhaps they should only be able to specify one single country. In that case, I can restrict it to leaf nodes, meaning the higher level can't be clicked. And only the leaf node can be selected. I can also enable single select, forcing the user to pick just one country. It all comes down to understanding your data and deciding what's best for your users. When we add slicers, we need to be conscious of some of the really common pitfalls. And these are the ones I see all the time. Firstly, it's over cluttering. So slicer, 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 too many slicers. Um, it needs to be intuitive for your user. When we're adding slicers, we need to be conscious of our, of our user's interaction. Your user's experience of your report is an essential part of its success. And when you add too many slicers, it gets confusing. A slicer is an excellent way to make your report interactive and dynamic, but be mindful of what you want your user's experience to be. And perhaps a filter or drill through makes more sense. If you're not really sure, drop a comment below and I'm more than happy to chat it through and help figure out what's right for your report and your users. Next pitfall, confusing interactions. If you have used interactions before, you'll know that they can be so helpful and so confusing. What it means is you can tell one visual that it can or cannot interact with another visual. So for example, you might have a filter based on country and you can use that to say, well, actually don't filter on this visual that represents a global number. And therefore I don't want it to change when I select an individual country. But that should be really clear for your user or else they're going to wonder why is everything else changing? The next slicer pitfall is performance bottlenecks. If you're choosing to have a slicer on a column that has literally hundreds of thousands of unique values, everything's going to get a bit sluggish. So to keep everything snappy, make sure your data model's optimized and you're mindful of what filters and slicers you're adding. If this list slicer has been helpful, you're definitely going to want to check out my previous video on using conditional formatting on a button slicer to make it interactive and colorful.